تابع الرقم الموجود على المونيتور وان شاء الله نستمتع بباقي البرزنتيشن The next speaker, it is my great pleasure to introduce Prof. Dr. Montasir Zayed, the head of nephrology unit in Alexandria University. He will talk about linear replacement therapy in critical ill patients. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee inviting me for this uh, elegant uh, conference and uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for your uh, nice introduction. I will talk about renal replacement therapy in critically ill patients. Uh, at first, uh, uh, the term acute tubular necrosis was first described during the Second World War uh, in autopsy for uh, patients uh, dying from crash injury. And the uh, mortality at that time was about 100% because of absence of dialysis. And the acute dialysis was first described during Korean War 1950, uh, decreasing the mortality of acute renal failure to about 50%. Acute kidney injury in the intensive care unit is common and depending on definition, about 50 to 60% of patients in intensive care unit have acute kidney injury and up to 70% of these will require renal replacement therapy and it is an independent risk factor for mortality of about 50 to 60% mortality in critically ill uh, patients. Uh, in the last half century, much have been learned about the pathogenesis of ischemic and nephrotoxic acute renal failure, uh, but uh, in spite of that, uh, acute renal failure continue uh, to rise uh, and uh, without in <coughs> increase in survival really in spite of improved critical care. The associated mortality in uh, these randomized uh, measure, uh, randomized control trials ranges from uh, 45 to 66 uh, percent mortality in spite of advancement in uh, management ranging from intermittent hemodialysis to continuous renal replacement therapy dose and in different doses of the renal replacement therapy and dials. Treatment of acute kidney injury is principally supportive and the renal replacement therapy indicated in patients with severe kidney injury with the goal of optimization of fluid status, maintain metabolic, nutritional, and electrolyte balance. Uh, the basic principles of uh, renal uh, replacement therapy uh, are uh, diffusion, which is a movement of solute from one uh, side of the semi-permeable membrane to the other side of the membrane across its concentration gradient and the convection which is a bulk movement of solvent from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane uh, with pressure uh, gradient. Uh, and ultra filtration is a movement of fluid through a membrane caused by uh, pressure uh, gradient. The modes of renal replacement therapy in intensive care units are intermittent hemodialysis continuous renal replacement therapy, peritoneal dialysis, and the hybrid therapies like SLED and renal tubule assist device. The major renal replacement techniques, intermittent hemodialysis and inter isolated arterial filtration, uh, hybrid therapy as slow extended daily dialysis, and the continuous therapy in the form of continuous venovenous hemofiltration, uh, continuous venovenous hemodialysis, continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration, and slow continuous ultra filtration. Towards target therapy in non-septic acute renal failure, we can uh, perform daily in, uh, intermittent hemodialysis or daily SLED uh, in addition to continuous venovenous hemofiltration uh, at uh, a volume of exchange of about 35 milli per kilogram per hour, especially in patients with uh, cerebral edema or patients with acute liver failure. 
and for septic acute renal failure by daily intermittent hemodialysis or daily SLED uh, with a dose of uh, continuous venovenous hemofiltration if used of range of about 35 milli per kg per hour up to 50 to 70 milli per kg per hour. And for catecholamine resistant septic patients, high volume hemofiltration in from 60 to 120 milli per kg per hour for 96 hours. To describe to describe these different circuits of slow continuous uh, ultrafiltration, uh, vascular access we withdraw blood by blood pump, and through this hemofilter, uh, the ultrafilter will uh, come out to be collected without a replacement solution. For this uh, picture of uh, continuous venovenous hemofiltration uh, and uh, a replacement solution is used whether pre uh, bump or post uh, bump uh, using a blood uh, pump for and uh, for continuous venovenous hemodialysis a dialysate is used uh, counter current to blood flow with uh, effluent collected without replacement solution and for continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration uh, a dialysate is used and ultrafiltrate will be replaced by a replacement solution. We uh, used to uh, to perform uh, uh, continuous arteriovenous hemofiltration in Alexandria in 1990. We, I started uh, using this continuous arteriovenous hemofiltration by the original description of Kramer 1977 uh, for patients with acute kidney injury. And after the introduction of acute dialysis monitor, we used the continuous venovenous hemofiltration for uh, treating patients with acute kidney injury in uh, intensive care uh, units. Uh, as regards intermittent hemodialysis, which is the oldest and the most common technique, uh, it is primarily a diffusive treatment, fluid removal by ITAR filtration, and uh, due to pressure driving through circuit, and it is best for removal of small molecular weight uremic toxin and typically utilized four hours uh, per session, three times per week. Continuous renal replacement survey is defined as uh, a an extracorporeal uh, blood purification survey intended to substitute for impaired renal function over an extended period of time and applied or aimed at to be 24 hours per day. For sustained low efficiency daily dialysis, uh, it is intermittent renal replacement therapy at lower blood and dialysate flow for prolonged time up to 12 hours uh, per day. And it uses conventional dialysis machine with flexibility of duration and intensity and reduced the cost and low or absent anticoagulation. To differentiate this table differentiates between the different types of uh, renal replacement therapy in the intensive care units. For continuous renal replacement therapy, it is treatment for seven days per week and for SLED five to six days per week and for intermittent hemodialysis three to five sessions per week and uh, the time of dialysis will be maintained for 24 hours for slow continuous therapy and eight to 12 hours for slow extended daily dialysis and for four hours for intermittent hemodialysis and the blood flow will be low for continuous renal replacement therapy in the range from 100 to 2 100 milli per minute and for slow extended daily dialysis from 200 to 300 milli per minute and for intermittent hemodialysis from 350 to 400 milli per minute and the lazit flow all of course will be in the range of 20 to 30 milli per minute for slow continuous therapy 300 to 350 for sled and 500 to 800 uh, milli per minute dialysate flow for intermittent hemodialysis uh, actually, the anticoagulation for CRRT could be heparin or uh, citrate anticoagulation. For SLED, also heparin or nothing. We can utilize uh, low heparin protocols or uh, no heparin. And intermittent hemodialysis, we can utilize heparin or nothing. And the hemodynamic stability 
was much better for CRRT than for solid and intermittent hemodialysis. Of course, CRRT could be ordered by a, a, a nephrologist or intensivist, but for uh, SLID and intermittent hemodialysis, usually it, is, it needs a nephrologist to order. The recently described renal tubule assist device, which uh, uh, is a via artificial kidney, which uses renal tubule cell in an artificial structure to fulfill functions unaddressed by uh, current dialysis. And currently under the research of Dr. David Humes in, uh, in clinical trial for acute renal failure, the renal assist device hopes to carry out those functions neglected by simple hemofiltration and improve the current mortality rate. This um, uh, micrograph uh, shows a cut section uh, through a hollow fiber with confluent monolayer of porcine uh, renal proximal tubule cell along the inner surface of the fiber. In his uh, study, 40 to 58 patients with acute kidney injury were randomly assigned to treatment with RAD uh, system in addition to standard renal replacement therapy. Outcomes were significantly better for acute kidney injury patients treated with RAD uh, system after uh, one uh, month, 33% of patients in red uh, group had died compared to 61% of those treated with renal replacement therapy only. And patients who received the red uh, modality of treatment were also more likely to be alive after six months, and the risk of death was about 50% lower in red group. And patients in red group also had a shorter time to return of kidney function and the overall kidney function recovered in 53% of patients with red compared with to 28% without. And in both groups, about 20% of patients survived but never recovered the kidney function requiring chronic dials. Actually, many endogenous mediators of sepsis can be removed during continuous venovenous hemofiltration or continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration, in which dialysis is not able to remove these mediators. And CRRT has now been used as adjunctive treatment for the following sepsis, controlling hyperthermia, decreasing inflammatory response associated with cardiopulmonary bypass and cardiac arrest, and achieving or maintaining acid-based hemostasis in patients with severe acidemia. Correcting anasarca of different etiologies, preventing massive fluid overload in patients receiving large amounts of clotting factors, attenuating the inflammatory response associated with prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass and the correction of sodium disturbances in patients with limited renal function. The timing of co uh, continuous renal replacement therapy is a very important issue and traditionally dialysis is started when standard indications for dialysis like volume overload or solute removal become necessary. However, recent data suggests that early initiation of CRRT improves patient outcome. Given the low rates of complications associated with CRRT and the high risk of death associated with acute kidney injury, consideration should be given to starting therapy early when F criteria is present rather than waiting for complications to occur. And when to stop, it, the simplest answer would be when renal function has recovered. And one approach that was used in the largest uh, trial of dialysis intensity published to date used this rule described. As regards timing of renal replacement therapy initiation and its effect on outcome, Bay and et al. in critical care nephrology, uh, in critical care uh, journal, uh, the mortality for patients with early start uh, renal replacement therapy was about 39.4% compared to late start of renal replacement therapy in patients with uh, acute kidney injury to about 61.5% uh, with significant uh, which is significantly uh, different and six, 60 day mortality uh, after uh, start of treatment was about 44.8% for patients uh, with in early uh, renal replacement therapy start compared to 64 0.8% for patients with late start of renal replacement therapy. As regards anticoagulation, uh, heparin could be used uh, as usual, 
uh, low molecular weight experience in low molecular weight in CRRT is limited and citrate anticoagulation is commonly used uh, for uh, anticoagulation in continuous renal replacement therapy uh, as citrate binds calcium to form a complex that is easily, readily removed by uh, diffusion dialysis and with prolonged infusion, citrate toxicity may occur in the form of hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypernatremia, and metabolic alkalosis, and hypocalcemia could be counteracted and action of citrate by infusion of uh, calcium in uh, the venous limb of a dialysate circuit. Uh, whether continuous versus intermittent dialysis, it is an ongoing debate and theoretical benefits to both. At least seven randomized control trials and the three meta-analyses have not demonstrated difference in outcome. Meta-analysis of uh, nine randomized trials, no effect on mortality or recovery to renal replacement therapy independence. Suggestions that continuous renal replacement therapy had fewer episodes of hemodynamic instability and the better control of fluid balance may be preferable in specific subpopulations. Better preservation of cardiovascular function and the maintenance of hemodynamic stability prevents surge in intracranial pressure associated with intermittent therapy, effective in clearance of middle molecules, and useful in removal of immunomodulatory substances in sepsis like endotoxin and interleukin-1 permits protein-rich nutritional support with a neutral nitrogen balance preventing protein malnutrition and questionable clinical benefit as regards survival and renal recovery. Specific patient population who may benefit from CRRT, hemodynamic instability, combined acute renal and hepatic failure, and acute brain <coughs> injury. Bro intermittent renal replacement therapy, it is practical, flexible, less expensive, fewer bleeding complications, less filter clotting, and superior solute removal, and more rapid removal of toxins due to high flu. A specific patient population which benefit from intermittent therapy are high bleeding patients uh, with high uh, bleeding risk and acute treatment of hyperkalemia, rhabdomyolysis, poisoning, and tumor lysis syndrome. Uh, bicarbonate level in patients maintained on uh, continuous venovenous hemofiltration, uh, you find that it is stable over time uh, while there is swings in level of bicarb uh, more with intermittent hemodialysis than with SLED. Also, blood urea nitrogen will be maintained at a constant level with slow continuous therapy compared with intermittent renal replacement therapy. Also, uh, <laughs> removal of uh, fluid uh, will result in uh, more stable blood volume and more stable arterial blood pressure in slow continuous therapy con compared with the uh, same level of ultrafiltration in intermittent hemodials. In this ATN study, 1,124 patients were randomized to intensive management strategy in a stable hemodynamic patient SOFA score from zero to two, intermittent hemodialysis six times per week, keeping KT over V around 1.2 per session, and less intensive management for this group of stable hemodynamic patients by, intensive, uh, by intermittent hemodialysis three times per week, also maintaining KT over V of around 1.2 per session, and for unstable hemodynamic patients with SOFA score from three to four, continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration at 35 milli per kg per hour, or SLED and extended deal dialysis six times per week, and for uh, less intensive management, continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration at 20 milli per kg per hour, or SLED and or extended daily dialysis three times per uh, week. The primary outcome was not different between intensive therapy and less intensive therapy, and in critically ill patients with acute kidney injury, treatment with higher intensive intensity continuous renal replacement therapy did not reduce mortality at 90 days. This renal trial of 1,508 patients randomized intensive CRRT and to a conventional uh, CRRT at a level of uh, fluid replacement at 25 milli per kg per hour of airflow. 
also uh, mortality outcome in the renal study was the same without any difference between higher intensity and the lower intensity. For this convent trial, the effect of continuous venous, uh, venous hemofiltration versus intermittent renal replacement therapy on outcome of critically ill patients with acute uh, renal failure, it is a prospective randomized controlled trial, a single center prospective trial of, of, for, uh, with 252 critically ill patients with dialysis dependent acute renal failure, patients were randomized to receive either daily intermittent hemodialysis or continuous venovenous hemofiltration, and the primary outcome was survival at 14 days. And secondary outcome measures uh, uh, include 30 day in intensive care unit and intra hospital uh, mortality, as well as. Uh, course of disease severity, biomarkers, and need for organ uh, support therapy. The results, uh, they concluded that no statistically significant difference was observed between the treatment modalities regarding mortality, renal-related outcome measures, or survival. I will omit some slides because short of time, and uh, Uh, I will uh, pass through Ronco uh, study uh, of 425 patients. Uh, he randomized uh, 146 uh, at ultra filter of about 20 milli per minute, uh, per, uh, 20 milli per kg uh, per hour, uh, and another group for 35 milli, and a third group with uh, 45 milli per kg. This landmark study concluded. Uh, that uh, minimum ultra filtration should be at least 35 milli per kg <coughs> per hour with better survival for this group of patients over 20 milli per kg per hour and a better, a more better survival for high uh, volume hemofiltration of about 45 milli per kg per hour. Uh, to summarize, the choice of renal replacement therapy in critically ill patients is best left to the clinician handling these patients, depending on the condition of patients, infrastructure, expertise, and funds available in a given situation. Therapies are not one against the other, and don't use old studies to compare new treatment, and whatever treatment is used, use it at its best performance, be flexible, and try to prescribe the right therapy for the right patient, and be ready to cross over from one modality to another, and they make sure you are not under dialyzing the patient. And thank you. Thank you, Professor, for the